Um, so we had an internet connection failure there for about 30 seconds. It said I was unstable. So we're back on the 5G. And uh, sorry for our listeners that uh, I don't have an editing team. I do not have Barstool Sports behind me. I am just me in my shed talking to Mayday Miser. So um, that is what it is. And um, horse racing is where we're ending. And you were talking about how it gets your juices flowing, right? It's been a lot of fun to do, get involved with, um, you know, even just from a a betting standpoint, there's a track that uh, my buddies, we go drink beers at about 20 minutes from our house. So it's awesome. It's a lot of fun. No, that's great, man. I'm glad you got uh, something that gets you going like that after hockey because everybody needs that stuff. I know you were done a bit, well, quite a ways before me then because you were the old crusty Harry and we were the same age and I was still a young Lou just budding as a rookie. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Anyways, I'd like to know now because we got to get into your hockey playing stuff now, okay? I think it's time to move on. Um, minor hockey in Adina, and then uh, the decision and what age you decide to go to the U.S. national program because I think that's when it's first getting going. But minor hockey first, please. Yeah, it, it was uh, like like Woody's Pub is in Edina, Minnesota. That's where I'm from. That's where I grew up and played Edina, played Edina hockey my whole life and um, love it. And it was great to me. And um, now hopefully my kids play growing up here. And uh, let's see, I was my freshman year in high school. After that, played for the varsity team and I was 15. And I was fortunate and lucky enough to get invited out to Ann Arbor to play for Team USA and um, at the Ann Arbor program. And, you know, obviously it was tough because not to be like whatever, but Edina is one of, if not, well, no, we are the best team in Minnesota, most state championships. And uh, so leaving the Edina high school hockey team was a tough decision, um, but I knew I wanted to play college. I knew I wanted to play in the NHL. So, you know, it was time to, to make, make that decision. And um, the Edina coach at the time was a guy by the name, of, or still is the coach, Kurt Giles, who played in the NHL, played for the Minnesota North Stars, knew the, knew the you know, an amazing guy, amazing coach, this and that. And, he looked at me and said, you got to go, you know, you don't pass up something like this for two things, the development, but then playing for your country. And that's what really, you know, here's this guy selfish. You could have said, no, don't go, don't go and stay, you know, stay with me for three more years. And he was like, you know what, guys, you got to go, go play. That's where you're going to get the, you know, better opportunity to do this and that more exposure. And so I left home after ninth grade when I was, um, let's see, I was 16 going in out to Ann Arbor, Michigan, and uh, the U.S. program, it was, it's, let's see, I was the fifth year of the program, and I'm, so I'm, I'm 37 now, so, you know, whatever, go back however long, um, that was the fifth year of the program, it was awesome, it was absolutely top-notch, 15 out of 10, greatest place, greatest thing ever, greatest decision, um, absolutely loved it, and it's only gotten better, I mean, as now, obviously, we all see the, the, the USA players that are being produced and coming out of there, as well as, you know, the teams that we're finally developing. Um, obviously, you know, being an American, you know, Canada is always, you know, but we're, we're, we're coming for you guys. Yeah. We're no longer just, you know, uh, a, a point game against us. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so we're the, the program. I, and I strongly, strongly, strongly believe that the program, and the program I say, the USA National Team Development Program, NTDP in Ann Arbor, is a big reason for that. And um, the way it's bringing people together, getting the kids, training them, this and that, and, and getting them ready for the next level, whether it is college or right to the pros, whatever that may be. And, and, uh, and it's definitely paying off. So, I mean, it's, it's, it was the greatest thing I've ever done. I learned so much, both, not even just a hockey standpoint, from just a, a person. An individual but then now i translate that into business too um try to bring everything together and, and i i really do i've never learned anything more or more than i learned there for and, two years. and what ages were you like how old so i was you? there i went for 16 i was 16 i went for my sophomore year um i'm really 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 actually smart with school 
So I actually skipped a year of high school. You can't see me, but I'm winking right now. Um, but I, uh, so I was supposed to be there for three years, but myself and, and my teammate and best buddy and all my center there, Brian McConnell, we both actually skipped a grade. And uh, so we did the program in two years and then went to college. Um, so two years, you, you typically you go there for two years though. Okay. Cause I was curious, like what, um, a day is like for those kids because yeah. like you, so you leave home. Cause like for a day in junior B for me was like living at home with my parents, going to my hometown school, hanging out with my hometown friends after school, same thing, Mondays and Wednesdays, I'd have practices and I'd play like a game or two on the weekend. And I'm pretty sure the U.S. National Development Program is a little different than that. Yeah, it was, you know, it was, you, you go to the regular high school in Ann Arbor. I went to Pioneer High School. Um, you go to regular classes, do the whole deal. Remember, you, you got you to gotta get through the NCAA clearinghouse and all that. So you can't just totally blow off school. I mean, you know how it goes. I mean, you, you have to do okay. Do, you know, do good enough to get in um, to college. Um, and then after, after school, you go to the rink and every day you, and you, if it's not a game day, you, you, you work out and you practice. I mean, it's, I mean, nothing, you know, but it's, but it's where you, what you're doing is you're, you're doing it with the, the you know, best. Not to, yeah, you're doing it with the best kids at your age group across the country you know 90 percent of the best kids go to the program if you you know and you're training with them you're working out with them and then you're working out with you know the guys that you know the the strength coach and the boxing coach and the stretching everything you do there you know that wasn't I didn't have that 89 in high school at the time you know or junior b or wherever people are you know what I mean so that's with the stuff that they really give you um you know every Wednesday we had to box we had a full boxing ring and we freaking, I mean, I broke my nose three times in two years, just boxing against my teammates. And we had to fight this crazy kid that was being like a junior Olympic. They bring him in. He was trained to be a junior Olympic and every weekend he would just beat us up. It was unbelievable. It was terrible. It was the worst day ever. Every week it was awful Wednesdays. Uh, but at the same time, I'm not saying I'm tough or anything, but I learned a lot from it. You know, how to, how to react in different situations in life and in business and, and now chasing kids. It's like, you know, try to stay cool during this and that. And so it was, I, I got nothing but the, but the greatest things ever to say for the program. Yeah, no, I, I always was curious about it because when you look at all the different routes, there are yep. um, Canada doesn't have anything like that. And like, uh, like this is ridiculous to even say, because like, he's an eight year old kid. I'm just saying, if my kid was Sidney Crosby and say he had dual citizenship and he could go either way, <laughs> you know, I'm Canadian, but that yeah. U S national development program sounds like uh, it's just like, it's like a factory of just pumping out superstars right now. So I I'm, I was year five of the program. You're five and six, 22. I'm, I'm 1983. That was my year. 22 out of 22 kids on my team played division one hockey. I mean, on full rides. I mean, you, that says something, you know, well, and, and, and it's it bigger now, right? It's way, yeah. it's bigger now. Like the players, well, the players in the U S are better now. Like you look at St. Louis, Minnesota was always good. Yeah. Um, Michigan was always good. Yep. Um, I never got to play against Minnesota as a kid, but then yep. like you see all the players and like you realize how good they were growing right. up. And um, but like there's all these other states now that have hockey players because of all the retired NHL players. Right? Yeah, no, you're you're exactly right. It's, the way it's expanding in the U.S. has been crazy and and good for the U.S. and part of the reason why we continue why we're getting better and better. I mean, I my only thought on why Canada doesn't do it is there's too many good players. How do you pick 22 of them? You know what I mean? Well, that's gotta be hard for the U S man. How do you pick well, 22? It, like, yeah, but it wasn't 20, 20 years ago. No, but, it I, mean, wasn't. It was, but it, I mean, now it's definitely getting harder. You know, it's getting bigger and bigger, the pool of players, but 
Um, so no, yeah, I, it's like when I went to Western Michigan, all my classmates were basically Canadians. And now, like, it's not that way. There are Americans going there. And yeah. it's harder for a Canadian to get a scholarship because there's more Americans that are a lot cheaper. But anyways, okay. Yeah. Now, just because before we get into college and that stuff, and you are on the U.S. National Development Program, is you did play for Team USA, which is awfully cool because i never got to do anything even close to that you played under 17 and under 18 so uh what type of players are on those teams and like did you do all right and where were we, the uh, tournaments we uh yeah we had we had a we, we never won anything per se um in a in, you know we were we were pretty good internationally should have obviously done better um Finland, Sweden, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Timmins, Ontario. I spent um, 19, the New Year's Eve 1999 going to the Millennial deal. We were in Timmins, Ontario, and we, were, we had a game the next day, and we were, you know, we were 17, and there was an earthquake or something. Timmins, Ontario, yep, look it up. It's a real deal. Timmins, Ontario, earthquake, 1999, New Year's Eve. Uh, I won't forget that one. Um, you know, one of my, you know, going to the program, you, you know, it became a lot of good, you know, buddies across the country, this and that. Um, we had, we, our team did put to put quite a few NHLers together. Um, it's, you know, one of my best buddies, um, on one of your rival, um, podcasts, spitting <laughs> chicklets, Ryan Whitney. Yeah. Uh, I know we're, we're, you're chasing them down. He was, uh, we were at the program together and then at BU together as well. Um, Eric Nystrom played a while in the league. Matt Green, big, tough defenseman. Matt Green is a story that, you know, when he got to the program, you know, he was this big, tough kid uh, defenseman that, with all due respect to him, he could barely he could barely play the game with us. He worked his ass off, and he had good coaching, and he became an awesome, good defenseman, went to North Dakota, and then obviously a long NHL career. I think he won a cup, this and that, Stanley Cup. Or, I mean, a captain, and he was tough as nails. Um, he's a Michigan kid, you know. So we had a, we had a good group of guys, um, but we never won. We never won any of the international tournaments. I think we got silver in one of them. I don't remember which one, but well, either way, like you got the big USA in the background there. Well, like um, you got to play for your country, man. Like yeah. that. That is uh, that's a life memory. That like, yeah. <laughs> well, how many? what percentage of the people in the world get to ever do something like that? So it was, you know, I've got, I have three kids and a wife, um, those four things and playing for my country are probably the most five things I'm proud of the most. Um, absolutely. It's special, you know, for, for Americans hearing the, the star spangled banner play behind you while you're wearing USA. And I know the same thing for Canadians, this and that, but it is special. It's really cool. And, and that's, that's what I always go back to. When, when guys from my hometown and stuff say, why'd you leave? How'd you leave? And I said, well, I got to play for my country. You know, I mean, it's as simple as that. Oh, it's and, no, it sounds you know, pretty simple to me. I mean, like you said, I mean, it's, it's rare, it's hard to do and it's special. And it, uh, it was the coolest thing I've ever been able to do. So it, it, it felt, and then it went downhill from there. Right. I was just going to say, so like when you're out there for O Canada and uh, the, the star spangled banners playing, it's a little bit different than like when you're standing on the blue line for the Daytona beach bombers. Okay. I get it. A little bit different. Right? Daytona was also a very special year. Yeah. Very <laughs> special year. You're right. Okay. Here I'm we go. Gun, Lou Brown, <laughs> Castro. <laughs> <laughs> 1000 uh, years later all well, right you know. yeah remember the guy on the team that had a wall of beer cans he he yeah made, he had our second line center had two dwis during the season and literally had a 20 by 20 wall of empty beer cans biggest alcoholic in hockey um, Boston kid. He tried to fill the wall. He tried to fill it with empties, right? With all Kelly's his name. Kelly. Oh, oh, now you're dropping names. Yeah, after I, he it. would love it. He would love it. He <laughs> wants the credit. Stinkiest man in the world. Disgusting <laughs> human. He had great mitts and a great season. Good player. 
<laughs> Second line center, oh. Frank, 75 beers every night. And uh, great guy, though. Good teammate, fun yeah. guy. He was, he was a good, good part of our team. I tell you, I couldn't believe how he could do that and not just get so exhausted because he'd show up for practice and he'd skate by you and you'd be like, whoa, <laughs> like, whoa, <laughs> right? I know, it was disgusting. I mean, and he, he wouldn't even try to hide it. We would, you know, we'd suck cough drops down, chew gum, this and that. He would just, I mean, everyone knew. He would, but he would, he was fine the next, every day. But so. his, he could play still. But like his farts and the burping and just the odor, like was you're right, it was horrible. Okay, moving. Yeah, yeah. We're getting sure sidetracked. Still is a disgusting human. We're still getting sidetracked, but you know what? I don't think he is. I think he's grown up and he's a dad now. And he has kids, and um, actually, I think he's doing much better than those days of the beer wall. So, um, next question then, because we we <laughs> jeepers creepers, we're not even into college yet, like. When did, okay, whatever. Hey, you can't get through it, folks. You can't get through it. That's the new motto. Um, we have so, something good coming at the end. Yeah, here, really? Oh, dear. Stay tuned, stay oh, tuned. Oh, yeah, stay tuned, eh? Okay, here we go. Um, you decide to go to BU from the National Development Program, but you. I also have a question is, when do you get drafted by St. Louis? Is it at BU or is it at the... The other thing. Yeah, so that was part of the reason for uh, doing the program in two years versus three years was to be drafted after my freshman year in college versus in high school. Um, went to BU and, and uh, had a great experience at BU, uh, had played okay, and then got drafted. And uh, But that was, that was really – so after my freshman year, I got drafted. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then uh, I guess I, you already brought him up because um, that's the one thing I got written down about BU is um, when I listen, when I was listening to Spit and Chicklets, which is a, one of the main reasons why I got into trying to do this, which is not trying to do this. I'm just doing it because I like it. Like, I mean, you're 28 uh, episodes in. Congratulations. Yeah. And I got my first sponsor, Woody's Pub. So we're, first, we're doing. You, you have a sponsor in 28 episodes, 22 countries, 5,000 downloads. Let's go. Yeah. No. Yeah. You're right. And uh, so Ryan Whitney, I believe they call him Wit. Um, he's the same age as us. And when I listen to that podcast, um, they always talk about golf trips. And they always bring up a character named Mayday and his antics on these golf trips. And um, just because I seem to recall at being at Buffalo Wild Wings with you about, uh, I would say if we played 72 games that year, we were there 157 times. Um, I would say you told me that you were great friends with Ryan Whitney and uh, he was playing for like the Penguins or somebody at the time. And we'd always watch his games when we were together because he's your buddy, just like we'd watch Weidman because he was my buddy. And uh, now he's, he's really, he's really doing her, eh? Yeah. We're, we're, you know, still very close buddies text every, you know, all the time. Um, yeah, I mean, Chicklets is, is, is crazy what's going into, and uh, he's a good dude. I mean, you, you hear that and you see that in Chicklets, one of my best buddies. Um, you know, the, the, he's real, um, great shooter, funny, obviously. And, you know, what's, what's cool about it is I don't know hockey. I'm the first to admit it. I'm not a hockey mind. I, I don't see that, this and that. He's, he's very intelligent with the game. You know, and when he watches and sees things and picks it out and, you know, when he's talking about that kind of stuff, he, do, he does a good job with that. And, uh, yeah, that's been a fun – it's been a fun podcast and fun for him, I know. Yeah, no, it's uh, – like, listening to them and, uh, like, there's a couple times they talked about why they started it. And it was, well, I wanted to catch up with my old friends and what they were doing, and that's how they decided to start it originally. And – um that was a lot of why I decided to do this was yeah. And, and there's a, a lot different level of hockey players that all played professional that uh, 
all have ridiculous stories. Um, and, uh, yeah, that I, I thought it was cool that you got to know him or not that you're cool. You got to know him that you got to see what's happened to his life since all this, right. Since college and the national development program, like now he, well, he already had the millions and now he's got all this other stuff. It's like, wow, where were we? Hey, eh? we were in Daytona beach, I guess. Daytona beach with Tommy Gunn, baby. Two ales and hockey tails. <laughs> Presented by Woody's Pub. <laughs> no, yeah, it's been, it's, it is fun. It's, you know, it's fun to see one of your close buddies succeed. So, you know, on, on, on multiple levels, obviously with the hockey part of it, but then, you know, the business side of it too, or business part of world and, and life. And he's got two kids as well. So I know he's battling and doing that. We all know how that goes and how hard it is. It's amazing, but it's hard. And, uh, so he's doing that and, um, you know, he was doing some NHL network and this and that. And with the, uh, with the NHL announcing these new um, partnerships with TV in, in the USA and TNT, I'd be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if he's right in there and he becomes the next Charles Barkley of the NHL on TV. I you know? Yeah, no, I, those guys deserve it, man. Like yeah. they, they are funny. They're good at what they do. And like, yeah, it's it's the first podcast I go to. I'm I'm not gonna lie to anybody here. Um, okay, moving on from that. Um, you went to BU. I I don't I don't know. I listened to Spit and Chicklets. Did I think they they won it at some point? But you weren't on that team because you went back to the WHL where you were drafted at one point, eighth round to the Seattle Thunderbirds. Is that where you went to when you left BU? Yeah, but they did not win it when I was there. I BU know. Did, did they win it when he was I there? I, in, I think I left in 03, and they won it in 09. Yeah, no, um, I don't. I didn't know. I was I just did. guessing. I was guessing. No, no, yeah. I left after two years. I went. I did go to Seattle. Um, just kind of at the time felt it was the right move for my hockey career, development wise. Thought it'd be a you know more suit my style game. Went to Seattle, and I was awful. I was awful. I had just a terrible year. Great city. Um, not the organization's fault. I was bad. Simple as that. And then I uh, played a year there um, in the Western League, which, you know, was a good experience in, you know, doing that kind of thing. I played in just about every league you can, except the NHL, um, you know, but uh, had a bad year, but overall still a good experience. Um, one year and then moved on then played in the minors. Okay. So, um, a lot of each season though, like, you, like for me, I basically always, uh, other than like AHL, um, I always got put with good players because I'm the little guy that's supposed to score. Um, that year in the WHL, like what was it? Were you playing third line or like, were you not given, really good players to play with that could score some goals or you just weren't good? All of the above, you know, we had a bad team. Um, you know, one of my, one of my teammates, Nate Thompson, who's still playing in the NHL, actually, he's uh he's also a, a kid from Alaska. Great kid. Awesome guy playing still. I think he's in Montreal. No, no. In um, Winnipeg this year, played on a bunch of teams. Um, we just, we, we didn't have a good team. I had a bad season. Uh, nobody had a good season. Just didn't work out for okay. anybody. Really. No worries. You know, you know oh, yeah. I just realized we got so much more to talk about and we're like, <laughs> like we've been going way too slow for what you've all done afterwards is um, so did you sign with St. Louis then or not? So I was St. Louis blues uh, after my year in Seattle. And then my, my rookie year was sent to Peoria, Illinois, uh, which was the ECHL at the time. Um, had an awesome, you know, just an awesome year, both. I, I had a good season myself, I thought, but then also just my first year as a pro was good. A lot of fun, learned a lot. I had some good old guys to learn from, uh, drinking beers quite a bit and everything was good. I uh, got called up a little bit here and there to Worcester, Massachusetts. And, um, it was, it was good. It was the lockout year for the NHL also. Um, so that was kind of weird, but also interesting to see and kind of, I mean, to be a part of it, and when I say being part of it, I wasn't, but 
the funnel down, NHL players were playing the AHL and, you know, it, it just got everything kind of shifted down. Um, and then, oh, go ahead. And you still had a good season that year. Cause I know a lot of players around our caliber that, uh, that it really affected because all those guys get pushed down and you like, I wasn't in pro yet, but you, you still had a good year for a rookie in the East coast. Uh, what type of deal are you on? It was, you know, it was, it was a two way and it was fun. You know, it was, you know, I, a, a guy by the name of Smurf was my coach and you know, he was, he was a Canadian guy and he just, you know, he was hard nosed and we had a tough team. We had a lot of tough guys. And basically if you didn't play tough, didn't play hard, you weren't going to play. And, and that was what I liked to do. I wasn't, I was definitely not a tough guy, but I liked to play. I liked to, you know, this and that. And um, so it just kind of suited my style. I just had a lot of fun being on my own first year pro, making a little money, uh, living in a, a way better place in Daytona. Um, you know, so everything worked out well and then got called up a little bit. So that was fun. And then, um, and then the next year I went to, they, uh, St. Louis sent me to Alaska and, uh, which was 06. I only know that because we won the cup that year and Alaska, I was a third line checking and penalty kill expert and, uh, had the best year ever. We were partying until 2 AM at six nights a week. We had veterans, we had young guys. We were the best. It was awesome. And they treated us like Kings. We were a little mini NHL team and uh, we won the cup. We had good goalies. We had the MVP. We had the rookie of the year, uh, Verge, my boy, Alex Levitt. Um, he, what, he, what do you, what do you call him? Verge. Verge? Verge. Alex Levitt came, came from Wisconsin. Matt. No, yeah. So I know him because I have him on my list here is because literally he came to Europe and um, yeah. like just yeah. ruined my life because every league I, I went in, he would beat me in scoring by just a little bit, like by about a handful of points every year. He beat me by about a handful of points That's and funny. it got, it got really upsetting there by like Denmark. He gave me a 12, 10, 10 game head start, maybe 12. And um, I was like, whatever in the league and scoring. And then he joins from Sweden 10 games into a 40 game season and still beats me. And I finished second. So <laughs> yeah. Th thanks. Thanks. Uh, Verge. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Verge because he's virgin. Like he's like a 10 year old little boy out there. He actually, you have a terrible body. He has a 10 year old boy body. Uh, <laughs> great dude. Loves to party. Love to have a good time. We had a good time. It was his rookie year. He led the league in scoring as a rookie and he was out six nights a week. <laughs> like we said, drink more beer, score more goals. <laughs> and uh, so we had a good time, won it. And then after Alaska, I went to the old Daytona beach with you. Okay, hold we, on. You now you're going okay. too fast. Cause I wanted to know more about Alaska because playing Alaska, I, I, now we got to slow down again. Cause yeah, I, yeah. I, I got to navigate this, uh, Okay. <laughs> I got to navigate this pod here because now we're into Alaska. I, the beers are flowing over here, so I'm getting going. No, I understand. Mine too. So um, we've talked about the Verge and uh, how frustrating he was to me. But um, like playing in Alaska, man, I went up there and played fair. Can you banks. see me? Oh, are you going to do a beer bong right now? Yeah. Like in the ever, middle of the show? Has anybody ever done one on two ales and hockey tails? No, no, we've never done a beer bong during two ales and hockey tails. Um, I would say the most impressive was a magnum of wine and about three beers on top of that. Um, but this is good. Okay. This is interesting. So I guess uh, before it's you- hard holding it by yourself. Um, well, if you're going to do that in the middle of this, um, I guess we got to start updating the YouTube page more. Um because I, I all right, here we go, hairball. She's down the hatch in well, she's done right about now. That's not bad. Holy cow. So you gotta let out a burp or anything now? Nothing. Get him at Woody's pub. Well, Woody's pub, a diet of Minnesota. Um, this is this is two ales and hockey tails brought to you by. Woody's Pub in a diet in Minnesota, home of the beer bog. 
and also one of the greatest hosts of all time, Justin Mayday Miser. Anyways, where are we Alaska, now? Alaska. Alaska. What is it like playing there? Because I played against Fairbanks in college. Where is the East Coast team, and what's life like there? Well, it's no longer there. They folded. But uh, so I got sent there, and I was like, are you kidding me? I got to go to Alaska. I get there, and it was honestly like outside of my family stuff, the best year of my life. It was so much fun. We had just an awesome team. And just, and I mean that, boy, on and, on and off the ice, everything just was awesome. So much fun. And, you know, we, like I said, we, we had the greatest owners of minor league sports you could get. They literally treated us like kings. You know, and the whole state did, because we were, you know, we were the only pro sports team they had. Have you, and, have you listened to episode, I think it was 24 with Steve King? Uh, you no, probably you, you probably skipped that one, eh? The Cardiff Devils owner. Okay, fair oh, enough. I saw I saw those posts on social media. Yeah, no, go go ahead with your minor pro best owners, and we'll see where we match up then, eh? Oh no, I was just gonna say how you know how great they treated us. You no, know, I, I'm just I'm just kidding. I'm just no, saying no, that. I know. Go ahead. Um, I'll tell you something off off podcast about about a couple of the owners, but uh, no, they, you know it was just a really good year. We had a good team. We had a group, you know, we had old guys, married guys with kids down to, you know, myself and like there was three or four or five of us that uh, were, you know, 22 and single, um, you know, having fun in all the cities. And our conference was, so we play in Anchorage, but then we go on the road for 10 days to Los Angeles, San Diego, Las Vegas, Phoenix. So we'd be in all these great cities just having the time of our lives and then we'd win by five goals every night, you know, <laughs> that's and, living, um, that's living My my job coach told me to play defense, shut down the other line, the top lines, kill penalties, and then make sure verge Alex Levitt. And then my boy, Chris Menard, many get home safe every night. Chris Menard lives around here now. So both, he, so led, I the know. League in, he led the league in scoring. And Verge led the league in points, if I if I remember. And, What's the? I thought leading the league in scoring is the most points. You're talking about goals. Goals, Menard. goals. Sorry, many was goals. Verge was points. So that guy lives, I think, in in Port Elgin, half an hour away from me. And uh, unbelievable guy, awesome guy. We had so much fun, many. And uh, the three of us with some other guys, we would go out, and uh, coach would say, "Mice, you get them home all right?" And I'd be like, "Yep, I got the two the two studs home every night." And uh, so we had a good, we had a good time. It was a lot of fun. No, that's awesome, man. That sounds like a blast. Um, winning and uh, good dudes on your team is the best recipe ever. And then good owners and uh, people that get it. But anyways, I burped in the mic again, folks. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to. Um, I didn't even do the beer bong and I'm burping in the mic. So sorry about that. Um Okay, where are we again? We're leaving Alaska now. And oh boy. So you win the whole thing. Is there any stories about the uh the 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 celebrations? Because I have some great stories of my celebrations. And if you won the East Coast and this is your one celebration, give me something here, bud. Yeah, so we we uh we had a really good, awesome group, as I mentioned. We won the team, we won it on the road in Gwinnett in uh, Georgia and um, which was really special and pretty cool because we won it. And after the game, it was us 20 guys and the owners that got to party and hang out for one night. There was no wives, there was no kids. There was, you know, you know, it was just us. And when people talk about winning on the road, I, I said, it was the greatest thing ever because for one night you get to do it together. And then we went back. So we did we did Anchorage, or I'm sorry, we did uh, Gwinnett in Atlanta. All the fun bars, this and that, hooting and hollering. Stumbled home to Alaska. We got home. We got to the airport, and 2,000 fans on the tarmac waiting for us. Because again, that's all they had at the time. There was no other sports pro sports team. So uh, we rolled in, and we had a parade, the whole deal. You know, we 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 all stayed about two weeks extra. Um, 
if you recall, Dayton, we stayed about 14 hours extra to get out of there. And that just it shows, you know, how good and how fun it was. We went deep sea fishing, um, this and that. You know, it was, it was awesome. Uh, you guys can shoot me on Twitter if you want to hear some personal stories about what happened in Alaska that we can't say on the podcast. because <laughs> We don't want to offend our sponsor, Woody's Pub on two ales and hockey tails. That's true. We would never, ever um, upset a sponsor on this podcast, right? That would just be wrong. So, um, you know what? Winning championships is like literally, it's the best thing in the world. Um, I, I know about it. I just had uh, last Saturday, my 20 year anniversary um, zoom call with the entire Elmira Sugar Kings of junior hockey. Um, and they found like basically everybody, the GMs, the coaches, the, and like, there's a couple, you know, rest in peace, but like, um, like 20 years later, we got on a zoom call and we were all the exact same, just like me and you right now. And I guess it's time to move on to Dayton, right? Because we almost had that bond. We almost did her with the, with an uphill battle. It was an uphill battle and we almost did it. Uphill battle. (laughs) I mean, are you kidding me? We were climbing Mount Everest against us. (laughs) I mean, we had fucking uh, Don McAdam. That was our owner and supposedly head coach. He was our head coach, but he never got behind the bench once. We were saved by a guy by the name of Derek Clancy. Clance, mm. who was a brilliant hockey mind in my mind. Absolutely. And, and he put us misfits, misfits together. And with all hatred, he hated Donnie too. And he knew the situation was brutal. And he brought us all together. And we all hated Dayton. We hated the whole deal. But we loved, you know, we all came together. And that's what it was. Um, There's so much bad stuff that we could talk about. But at the same time, there was so much good. We drank beer every night. We played hockey. We won. Can you you remember? Can you remember? Okay, there was a couple times I remember that year. I'm going to, I'm going to say a few things. The time we realized where we lived, wherever that shitty place was, where the rent was 150 a month. Kettering, Ohio. There you go. How close we were to the actual university um, bars. Um, We figured it out like halfway through the year. Uh, But anyways, there was that. Um, Well, that's uh, when you and I started to have a good year. Well, that's when we started having fun, right? As we started, and then we like, had a good year, right? Because because winning, right? Winning is fun, and fun is winning. It's it's it, it it balances out, right? If you have fun, you win, and if you win, you have fun. Yep. And if you lose, you're miserable, and if you're miserable, you lose. Oh yep. dear, we're getting deep. Okay, uh, Dayton, Ohio, though we've already discovered Tommy Gun. Um, I just. There's there was a couple days there. I brought this one up. Is we played Cincinnati, so I we played somebody, I think the first round, like a best of three or five or whatever. Then we play Cincinnati, we're down three games to one, and we're living in the slums. And you're like, I got my car packed, I got my apartment packed, I'm ready to rock and roll. Let's play bean bags, let's have a day. And, uh, and that'll be that. And, uh, we did that, eh? We, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. We were down three, one, like you said, everyone's, as they always say in hockey, making tea times. Well, I wasn't making tea times. We were all ready to get out of there. We were down. So I said, Hey, let's, let's party. Let's have a fun day. And all of us, including Tommy Gunn, there was 15 of us that started crushing beers all day and we had fun at our apartments we drank beers all day the next day we showed up to the rink and we crushed them oh well, i remember when we showed up we looked like lobsters we were completely sunburned oh, sunburned yeah <laughs> well so we did that we did that in since against the cincinnati well we turned around we won 
Then we played we played someone else. But then no, what so, I really remember is going to Florida. Oh no, so yeah, that's so we beat Cincinnati three. That's when we turned into lobsters. No, no, so we yeah, okay. We turned into lobsters a couple times, but uh we did the beanbag day down three games to one against Cincinnati. And then we got to the arena and we're all sunburnt like to hell. And we got Clancy and Dobbick Adam telling us how like we aren't taking this seriously. Our careers are going to be over. And then we go out there, we win the game. Then we win the next game. Then we win the next game. Then we go to Florida and then we're playing a team that is way better than us. Like way way better. better. And Adam Burkle goes crazy. And we're in the finals. And I mean, in Florida, you and I and whoever else was with us, we went (laughs) mini putt putt golfing, drank beers one night. Another day, we hung out on Fort Myers Beach to an area they call Times Square. It's a pier with live beach music. We sat there and drank beers for five, six hours in playoffs. And then showed up the next day and, and we won. We, like you said, we won the series. I don't think it was the day before the game. I think it was the day before the day before Before the game. Well, it, it, they're all right? the same day. I mean, it's all in there. Uh, no, yeah. I just remember we had lived in Kettering. I believe that is the right word. Um, yeah, it was. Day, Daytona beach, Ohio. And then all of a sudden we're playing Florida and it's like, you get down there and there's palm trees and you're like, where the hell are we? Like, I thought everybody in the East coast is miserable. Yeah. Well, right. And that's why you and I decided to go drink beer out in the sunshine on the beach. And you remember, I remember we walked by the Lonnie Kai on Fort Myers beach and it was spring break for the college kids. Oh, and I've been to the Lonnie Kai a couple of times, which will yep. come up in this podcast, but yep. 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 And I remember that specifically when you said that. Oh. And uh, yeah, no, we got lucky. We, we won that series. Then we moved on to Idaho. Yeah. We yeah. Idaho. Yeah. I can't believe we beat Florida and we go from Florida, which we're in <laughs> Daytona Beach, Ohio. Can I have another beer? Absolutely. Thing- we're not even close to done yet. Yeah. You're having one more. Well, we still got the post game show. Okay, okay, okay. Right? Like, yeah. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, it is uh Saturday night, folks, if you're wondering. Um, anyways, um or Wednesday. Okay, no, Idaho. We go there. I've never heard of Idaho. I've never heard of Boise, Idaho, for one. That's where we were playing. Um, they were called the Steelheads. And I've never been there, I've never been anywhere out there at all and what a spot eh yeah it was it was just beautiful we had played i was in that conference my year before in alaska so i knew the bars to go to i knew where to eat after quick meals and then get to the bars to get the food or the drinks etc um cobblestone roads great food mountain town beautiful place and they had a good tough team um you know one day i mean playing with wally I mean, not to toot your horn a little, but you were a great player and uh, good mitts and could score. We had a lot of fun, man. It was fun playing with you. And uh, I, we got to mention our goofy. Jojo. Crazy. Serious. Most Jojo. serious guy Jojo? out there. NHL brother, uh, Joe Cullen. Jojo. Who Jojo had a you know, bunch of years in the AHL. It was sent down to Daytona Beach. He was upset. <laughs> And he got paired with us two meatballs. And uh, his brother was longtime NHL veteran, Matt Cullen. And uh, every day we'd be trying to have fun and JoJo would just not be having it. And we would get him and once in a while, we'd get a, a smile on his face. And, but uh, the three of us played every single game together. And uh, he, he's, it was fun. It was a good time. Oh dear, I I don't have to take the headset off often to laugh because uh, Jojo, you're right. Like he was so not happy uh, being sent down there, and rightfully so. Same with you. Um, for me, I didn't know any better, so I was just in it to win it. <laughs> um, but uh, like that line, man, we 
we played against every team's top line. Um, I went from, I said in a podcast just lately, um, that I went from chasing Andy Delmore around uh, the first day of practice, like just at the end of the season before, um, and ruining my HL chances to getting sent down to the coast to, like you said, Derek Clancy, that guy could teach defense, man. Like, and he taught a game that was perfect for you and Jojo too, really. And, yeah. um, and he taught me, he taught me how to be a pro a couple days in practice after a night out with you. He, he taught me about that. Um, he taught me like after the rookie party, I'll re- never forget this story was he said to me, he knew it was the rookie party the night before he knew we were all banged up and he, he was like trying to kind of mentor me. And he, he pulled me aside. He said, Wally, he said, you know, you're a rookie. You had your rookie party last night. He said, do you know what the coach wants to see the next day? If you've been out drinking, he says he wants to see passes on the tape. He doesn't care how fast you're skating, but make a good pass and handle the puck correctly. And I tell you that uh, professional advice. um, I, I, I took that to the bank there for a few years there. Absolutely. I mean, he, he was the man and, and, uh, I'm surprised. I don't know what he's doing now or what, but well, right after that, he became like, he's like the head pro scout of Pittsburgh, right? Like he, he won the Stanley cup. Yeah. He was scouting, but I'm surprised he didn't do more coaching. I agree, man. He, he changed my whole career. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You're, I mean, you're exactly right. He was awesome. And that was, what's cool about it is like, he's like, I know you're partying. Just get your shit done. Make a good pass. Don't fuck up the drill. Excuse me. Can I swear in here? Don't mess don't, up the drill. Just, you know, do, you know, just look okay and we'll get through it. Put in a cop drop and let's go. But it was funny because you had played the league for a couple of years, but you're the same age as me. And he was like that with you. But for me, it was like, do you ever want to get out of this league? Like you can't right. show up like this. You got to yeah. get. And I was like, Okay, like I got okay, but uh, the rookie party, he was nicer to me than one other practice. I just yeah. remember the two. Um, he wasn't as nice the other time. Okay, um, I just remember like where we lived in the East Coast, and you had no control over where you ended up that year, right? Like you went from Alaska to Dayton, and you have no control over that. And it's like, why do you want to be a hockey player if? you see where you could live compared to where you do end up living and you have no control over that. Right. Yeah. Well, I was, it was, well, the frustrating part there was I was in Alaska and I was under St. Louis's contract and then I, be, I, I wasn't signed by them. So I went and signed with Trenton, New Jersey, the Trenton team, because they had a very good history of getting people called up. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go make a good run of it try and have a good season and get called up. And I get, I go two weeks early to train Trenton. Trenton is right. It rivals um, Dayton. It, uh, I think it has the most murders per capita or something. So it's a rough area. So why I wasn't going there for good, but I went there trying to, you know, move my career along and realized, and it went there. And then two days before the, the, uh, uh before the season opened they traded me um to Dayton didn't know anything about it got there and yeah that was it so I I and yeah like you said you don't know what's happening you don't know what's going on um that's part of the that's part of it so well um and like for you I guess yeah I just had a thought in my head but I'll get to that later Um, let's hear it no, it's just uh, like the type of player you were. You were, if I were your coach, I think you'd be the perfect third line left wing, play penalty kill, and just be a teammate. And uh, that year in Dayton, like we were like the first line because we had to play against, their, like we just played defense, right? <laughs> so like we didn't really have a first line other than Yannick Tifu. Um, but 
Like I just, I'm surprised you never got more chances in the A to to play that role. You never really got the chance, right? Uh, well, thank you, Lou Brown. Well, yeah. you're a bit crusty, though. You're a bit crusty, you know. No, no, is is Harry is. is what it is. Uh, you know, just like anybody, you know, never played in the NHL. Obviously, you all, you know, we wanted a chance, a shot. Uh, didn't happen, so that's all. all I, good. I just, I, I remember like how I don't know what the word is, warrior. Um, teammate, uh, I don't know what the word was, but pro, I, I, at that age, at that year, I remember a game when I was your line mate because we played together all the time and you did teach me defense and what I should do. Um, but you got just absolutely crushed, um, in South Carolina, yeah, I know, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I got knocked out. And like you had no legs. And then like I think it was like the next day you were like, No, I'm fine. I I can play. I played the next day. Yeah. Did you not? Yeah. Yeah. I got literally knocked out in South Carolina. You're right. I I the only reason I know this, I tell my wife. I bragged to my wife about this. Um how yeah, tough I was you are. Knocked, got hit from behind in South Carolina and played the next day. Uh but well, because I didn't want to miss a game. I didn't want to miss playing with Lou. Lou Brown, baby. No, and I, and like, and that's the way it was then. And I remember Derek Clancy, the, as smart as he is, and this is the way it works in the real world. It's the way it works in hockey. It's the way it works in any business. If you give somebody else an opportunity, yep. um, like they can take that and show yep. what they can do. Um or if you're that person getting the opportunity, you can then take that opportunity and give her. Um, like if I would have if I would have sat out that next game, someone could have played on the first line left wing and had three goals. Right, and then it's okay, over. Well, then I'm done. Right, then I'm done. Then I'm playing with drunk Paul Kelly, who drinks seventy beers a night, which is all right. That's fine. But you know, what I mean, I would have lost my spot. So that was my mentality always growing up playing with that. I don't want to lose my spot. And, and I remember a time I was, you'd call hurt. And um, like, I was not one for really telling the trainers when things were hurt, but like Derek Clancy came up to me one day and this was him teaching me. He was grooming me. He was, he was teaching me to be pro. He said to me, he says, are you hurt or are you injured? And He's like, if you're hurt, like Peter Pohl or whoever is going to take wow. your spot on the top power play. And if you're injured or whatever it was, right? Like if you're injured, you can't play. Yeah. If yeah. you're hurt, I'll still put you out there. Yeah. Get out there. Let's go. Yeah. And that's what it's about. Like you, you it's the same in the real world. Like if Absolutely. you get if you go on vacation for two weeks and nobody real, like nobody even cares you left then uh, and somebody else steps up and does everything, everybody's figuring it out. Right. Right. Exactly. No, you're exactly right. And that's, that's, what's cool about hockey and sports is, is uh, you know, what it teaches you away from the ice also, you know, and whether it be a good teammate at work or good family, parent, dad, this and that, whatever it is. Well, it's, and it's being a teammate and it's knowing your role, whether you're the dad, whether you're the, the the third liner, the fourth liner, the healthy scratch, the, the coach, the GM, like guys in hockey get structure, they get organizations. And then for me personally, going through some of the stuff I went through in Europe, where you have very bad leaders and bosses, um, you realize like when you get the really good ones, like how much they taught you. And I think Derek, Derek Clancy did that for us. Right. Dude. I I, am looking back. Absolutely. After 20 years of hockey or whatever, I'd put him right up there with one or two best coaches I've had partially the situation. I mean, it was awful. 
he he brought us all together to the finals to the so finals the, that's the other that good point we weren't we didn't just come to, I mean, we went all the way to the finals game, i don't know whether we lost him but like absolutely we won the, we won the first game and lost the next four okay so you know but we were there <laughs> and uh but we we shouldn't have even got out of the freaking play or the regular season um no i yeah and just so you know clance he wasn't even the head coach I know he was the Our boy, your boy, Donnie McAdam. And yeah, I'll rip on him now. Cause he's who knows what he's doing that guy. And the guy personally never did anything wrong to me, but what he did to that, any hockey player was awful. It was unbelievable. It was straight out of slap shot or minor li- or major league or whatever you want to call it. So I had a different situation that year. Because I was on a Syracuse Columbus contract. Yeah. So I got sticks. I got um, equipment or whatever. Um, you guys did not. Dude, there was, we, okay. So I, I got traded from Trenton two days before the season. Okay. So, and I was in Trenton for, let's say two weeks. So I got to know them, you know, just a very little bit, but I, you know, like I was, friendly nice so we're on game like 35 of the season of 75 whatever we played we're in Trenton I'm using my last year's sticks from Alaska because I couldn't get new ones in in Dayton the the I literally it's during the game there's like a, a penalty or something I skate by the Trenton bench and I'm or the, there's a whistle right by and he, the, the trainer goes hey there's a present for you on your bus I'm like, well, what are you t- okay? So I this whole the rest of the game, two periods. I'm like, oh, is it a case of beer? What do the boys want? Are we having cigars on the ride home? Nudie magazines? What is it? I get out to the bus after the game, after we won, of course, and I got six brand new sticks. The trainer from Trenton, the opposing team, gave me sticks to use for the rest of the season. It was that. I mean, it was just so bad. Dude, was- I went through the same thing and help run Germany and a random fan bought me six brand new twigs with like 10 games left and it saved my career for the last handful of years. Um, Cause if you don't have good sticks, like it's like, it's like a carpenter without his tools. And it's like anybody it's like else anybody would- without their anything. It's like, it's like a lead of a podcast that's in 22 countries without his headphones. You can't do it. You can't. You can't. Jeez, you're right. Um, but Derek Clancy saved my career, and yeah. I have no problem saying it, but he played me with you and JoJo every game, and we were not a high scoring line. Like, we were there to shut down the other teams, and he he – taught me that like and that's what we it, did though yeah oh we did and if if i turned over a puck at the blue line he taught yep. me about two or three times during the regular season if i did that once i was done for the night so yeah. i never did it and i never tried anything i never put it between my legs i never did a spin of rooney it was old school yeah and it, it worked yeah yeah no and then adam burkle doing crazy stuff was wild but that was fun times man we almost won it you almost went back to back east coast championships i know that would have been it would have been cool strictly because i went from the greatest organization to the worst that would have been cool (laughs) (laughs) okay so after that though this is the last i guess we're getting near the end is uh yeah um you got one more year left um we almost win it in dayton and then uh, I guess in the East Coast, you're, are you a free agent or what happens there? Reality set in that I wasn't going to make it to the NHL. I knew that, obviously. And uh, I said, I'm going to go play somewhere good. Good city, good fun. So I signed with Phoenix. Uh, went to Phoenix, Arizona this next year. And um we had a beautiful pool, a bar at the pool at our apartments. I had a good buddy, Brian Yandel, on my team. 
we just we had a great time in Phoenix, crushing it. All it was awesome. We had a, we had a bad team, but a great time. Um, it was a lot of fun, and it was just how I, it was how I would like to end it. You know what I mean? And and um, and then about three days before the trade deadline came up, coaches like, hey, do you want to do anything? Do you want to, you want, we weren't going to make the playoffs. Um, I was like, yeah, I'd, I'd go somewhere that's trying to go. So they traded me to Charlotte, um, Charlotte Checkers. So I went there for about two months, um, finished the regular season and playoffs with them. And that's, that's when I was like, okay, I'm done. Walked away. I've never regretted, stopped playing. Um, loved playing, loved every minute of it, but uh, all good where I'm at now too. So it was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. No, man, that's, that's awesome. That like, you're happy where you're at. You stopped the right time. Like there's guys that go too long. There's guys that go too short. There's guys that just start comfortable in what they did. Um, if you're comfortable with what you did and you did all this, man, like, geez, those are a lot of notes. And, uh, I had the best time of my life realistically for the shittiest place we could yeah. live. Um, I, I used, um, I, yeah, no, it was, it was the worst place you could live. Um, I, and actually now where living in Concord, I actually can't imagine living there. Um, but like we did it and we, we made the best of it. And we almost won the whole thing. Yeah, no, we had, a, it was like you said, we made the best of a terrible situation. We had a good time, a good group of guys, good friends. And uh, we, we worked hard on the ice and drank beer off the ice and, and, you know, had a good time and learned a lot and learned not to go back to Dayton, Ohio. Yeah. And Derek Clancy learned that too. And I'm glad he, uh, I actually saw a picture of him raising the Stanley cup about a handful of years later with Pittsburgh. And I thought that makes so much sense that he's yeah. raising the Stanley cup. Cause that guy, he deserved it. He's the kind of guy you're like, that guy deserves it. He does. He does. Like he was so good, man. He changed my whole career at the end of the season. He told me like, where do you really think you fit in here? And it was like, he started bringing up the Europe option in my head. And I was like, well, yeah, like that. And he just knew where everybody was. He knew yeah. how to, he knew how to teach me defense and it was playing with you and Jojo. Cause you were so responsible. And we also were the best of friends off the ice at dude. Some of the stories we have, some of the nights we have, I'll never forget. And I know you won't, but like we had so much fun that year, even though we were in the biggest shithole in the world. Dude, one of the best, one of the best nights, you probably don't even remember it, was you and I alone. Hey, I, I can't edit this, eh? You and I alone went out. We were like, hey, let's go drink some beers. It was like a Wednesday. And we, you remember there was this one club, club meaning like this little bar it was kind of fancier, not our normal places we would go. And we snuck, but we could go be sneaky there. And we went there and the two of us saddled up at the bar. And before you know it, we got a tap on the shoulder. It was Clancy. He was drinking red wine. And the three of us that night drank our faces off and had a great night of it. And nobody I, ever talked to it again. I don't and think it was just like, he, are, you sure he was just, are you sure that's well, Thousand percent, thousand percent. I know it was like yesterday because we had to carry your ass home and we never talked about it again. Fair he enough. drove us home. Okay. Well, that's two yeah. ales in hockey town. Two well. ales in hockey town. <laughs> the Wally sponsored by Woody's Pop. Uh, uh, yeah, no. Uh, so this is, uh, I, I guess that caught me off guard. I, I, did, I did not recall that, uh, that ale or tail. Um, so, um, huh. Uh, but Derek Clancy was literally, when you look back on it, that guy got hockey more than anybody. Yeah. He, he, he was so far ahead of the game. 
back when we were playing with him. He taught us how to play defense easily with a terrible team. And we actually almost won it. But then when you look back on the guy's careers, is it because we almost won it or is it because they were actually almost good? I don't even know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good question. Tough question. But Darren any- Clancy is the, is, is the guy. I if think you don't so. have him, if you don't have him and you don't go near, if you don't go near touching the finals, my career doesn't go 10 years. I don't learn how to play defense and I don't keep playing all those years. And it was Derek Clancy was a big reason. And I don't know why I'm tired pumping him so much on your podcast. <laughs> all good. He deserves it. He was a good dude. You should get him on here. You're right. I'm going to have to track him down. Get him on here for like episode 35 or something. 35. That's too soon, man. I already got all those booked. <laughs> hey, uh, thank you so much for having me on. This was awesome. I uh, really appreciate it. It's been fun listening and tuning into various podcasts you guys are doing wally hell of a player better guy so much fun playing with you uh played every single game one year with you uh power play penalty kill the whole deal it was awesome love you buddy oh dude i i you can we actually say one more tale before we're done yeah 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 friday night or not Friday night, whatever game seven is, we win in Florida. Do you remember that night? I don't know. Did We ended up at, uh, at the guy I had chirped that night. Um, oh, all the names are – anyways, oh, yeah. the, the, the refs drove us to the hotel, and you remember all that? Yeah. Okay, we won't talk. I know what you're talking about. Okay, never mind. It was a great night. No, I said I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it was a great night. That was a that was after we had beat them and they still let us into their house. And it was like I that know was, exactly where, where with the refs, the refs took us to the Florida Panther or Florida Everblades at, apartment. Yes. After and we beat we, them in game seven. We went we went out all that when ended up at the same bar and yep. the bar is closing and the refs us and the Everblades after game seven losing were like, where should we go? And we end up at their place and they were just, they were the best. I got to pee though. Okay. Go ahead. No, that was it. That was it. No, they were good. I got, I remember knowing the ref from my day, the year before in Alaska, because I had the part, the, the party apartment in Alaska. So the refs, in Alaska, they would always come over because they were there for a few days. They'd come drink beers in my apartment and stuff. It was, uh, it was, it was a good time. So, thanks, Wally. Thanks, everybody. Rock and roll. Hello.